Hey Danielle, this is Jacob with Mortgage Coach Software Support. I uh, wanted to put this video together to show you a couple of different options you have in terms of MI comparisons. So here's how I would do it. I, I would first off, um, obviously you want to choose if it's going to be an individual report or a marketing report. A uh, marketing report kind of strips all the contact information off so you can use a headline instead of sensitive borrower data. So for this case I'm going to use uh, just a headline for this one. And I'm going to skip a lot of these steps but I am going to show a purchase option here so it doesn't ask me for the current mortgage. And then of course you want to fill out all the fields in red if you can. If you know this information, definitely want to get it in there. This is going to help you generate things like loan to value. Uh, your MI will hinge on this if you're using a percentage for the cutoff. So make sure you put a property value in here. Now this is actually kind of important. When you're doing different MI comparisons, they may oftentimes have different down payments. So you'll want to make sure and account for their current savings balance in the bank right now. When you get to the end of the report, Edge is going to subtract the cash to close from that and that amount is going to continue to accrue at the rate that you specify here. So make sure you do put in a savings balance here that so you can have an apples to apples look when you get to the end. I'm not even going to concern myself with that last affordability section. I'm going to jump straight into the products. So let's say that uh, this one is going to be borrower paid MI and 10% down. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my 10% here. And let's say that I can get them a uh, four and a quarter interest rate on a 30 year term. And of course you want to put in your closing costs or go and use the fee templates, it's up to you on that one. I'm going to skip that for this particular uh, presentation. But then you've got to make sure to put in your mortgage insurance amounts here. So if you want to put it in as a dollar amount, that's acceptable. Uh, if you want to put it in as a percentage, that works too. Um, let's say for this one I can get a maybe 0.75 and then uh, I want it to cut off at 78%. So this product is done, so I'm going to add another product. And this time I'm going to use the copy from button. So this is going to save you a little bit of time. So I'll do copy from. I'm going to copy the borrower paid one. And this one I'm actually going to call it lender paid. So LPMI, 10% down. And then I've got my 10% already, but I'm going to build that, uh, that mortgage insurance into the rate. So let's say 4.625. And then I'm going to get rid of the mortgage insurance here because this is lender paid, so it's no longer applicable to the borrower. And then I'm going to add another product. Now let's show one with a uh, smaller down payment. So let's say a 5% down. So I'll do uh, BPMI, 5% down. And I'll copy that 10% one, and I'm basically just going to change this percentage here to 5%. Let's say I can get them the same rate. Obviously you want to check your guidelines and your rate sheets to make sure you can get them that rate. And then when I jump over to the MI, because they've got a little bit uh, higher LTV here, I'm probably going to have a little bit higher factor. Let's say this one's going to be 0.9. And I still want it to cut off at 78%. Let's add one more. I'll do the lender paid option for that 5%. So I'll copy from. I'm going to copy the 5%. And this one's going to be LPMI. 5% down and I've got my 5% already so I don't have to worry about that but I remember I want to build this into the rate so uh, let's go 4.65 actually that's a little too high let's go for four and a half on this and then closing costs of course and mortgage insurance on this one we're gonna omit this because this is lender paid now and let's check out what we've got so you can see the borrower paid 5% down is going to be the highest cost loan in this scenario. Every, every, all the other ones are going to be compared against it in terms of the monthly payment. And when you look at the, the, the long term, that one is actually also the highest cost over the five year period of time. So they, they're, they have significant interest savings and MI savings when they, when they use these lender paid options for now. But remember, we've got, uh, we've got a little bit of reinvestment to show on this as well. So. At this point, I would go to the adjust for investment strategy. All right, so you can see here, if you wanted to, you could do term reduction payments for the differences on these uh, on these different mortgages. I would say, since we're going to show this this uh, cash flow here, I'm going to use accumulation for it. So, for instance, if I wanted to, you can see that I start with fifty thousand. It's going to take twenty five to close because I didn't have any closing costs on this one. So my new saving start is twenty five thousand. That's going to continue to accrue at one percent. But remember, I'm saving them $99 a month here. So I can put that $99 straight back into their current savings account every month. And I'll do that for each one, 189.68. 
and then nothing on this one, and then 143.11 there. And you can see what the assets are doing over time here. I'm definitely growing the assets. Um, I've got a little bit more to begin with on these 5% down loans, so they're growing a little bit faster. This one is in particular. But once we get out of here, let's check out the report, see what it looks like. So I'm going to generate my total cost and kind of rip through these screens for a moment here. Now, very important for the long-term analysis, if you want your, your liquid assets to be reflected in the report, you've got to choose total net worth. Total net worth is going to be a total combination of their equity at this 15-year point plus whatever they've got in their liquid assets. So let's preview the report. All right, so pretty much the same as what we were looking at earlier. Um, the, uh, the interest savings, obviously, the, the, the lender paid MIs are going to be better because they're not paying so much mortgage insurance on each one of these. Um, I probably, my rates are probably a little bit off here, so it should be probably a little bit closer. I would say this is probably about 8,000 versus 4,700 kind of thing if I was using the correct rates. Uh, but again, you want to check your, your rate sheets for those. But overall, when you look in the, the, the long-term net worth, this is really where the crux of your presentation is. Um, you can see that we're showing our, our home values is growing across the board. And you can see what our different loan balances are at each point. So the, the last two options, obviously, they have a little bit higher loan balance at this point because they're not doing anything to knock down the mortgage. They're just reinvesting this money into an accumulation account. But check out the liquidity on this. They've got, they obviously owe a little bit more on this, but they've got 71,000 liquid uh, versus you know, this one here where they've only got 48,000 liquid. Now it's going to continue to grow over time and you can see what their net worth ends up at. Um, let me highlight these for you. But they're not really that far off. And the lender paid MI and borrower paid MI, when, uh, when you're going over time, you might find the lender paid is going to be a little bit more attractive of an option. But remember, you don't necessarily even have to stick with these 5 and 10% downs. You can show an FHA one with 3.5% down. Uh, maybe you can show a VA loan that has no MI on it if they qualify for it. Um, so there's a lot of different options there, but I would definitely recommend going with the accumulation for the long-term matrix uh, metric here so that, uh, so you can show that liquid asset growing over time. And the whole reason we did it that way is, and I mentioned this earlier, the, the apples to apples comparison. We've got, uh, let me show you here, we've got differences in our cash to close, 25,000 versus 12,5. So there's, there's more cash to close due here. But what happens is, remember, it subtracts that cash to close out of their current savings and allows that to continue to accumulate. So if you're using bigger loan terms here or bigger disparities between the down payments, you're going to find that the liquid assets change pretty substantially. Uh, and of course, when, uh, when, you, when you line up the rates correctly with lender paid MI, uh, these would probably be just a tad higher so that it could cover it. Um, so these will end up kind of evening out over the long term. So your real, your real uh, crux of your, of your presentation to your borrower is going to be how much interest in MI are you going to save because of this and the long term you're going to have about the same equity over the over the long term but how much liquidity do you want how much of your loan do you want paid off versus how much do you want in your pocket so hopefully this helps you um, if you have any more questions do feel free to, to email us over here at support and we'd be happy to help thank you much bye bye